May I start over? Okay, thanks. I'm sadist, and it's whatever. I'm starting to lose some weight. I think the stress is starting to get to me. Cause my ex-girl is starting to hallucinate. But I can't forget what she said to me. She said, sadist, you are truly great. But I can't give you the best of me. And I hope one day you won't fully hate my decision because this life's a test for me i'll always treasure how you knew me hey just pray that i'll be fine and stay blessed for me the reason we broke up was because she smoked some heavy weed and curled up in a ball of anguish she was high for two days felt like a soul was evicted from her body she was damaged asked me to lie to her parents and i refused there ain't no healing emotions with a bandage she would have stayed if i asked her to but i didn't because i needed an escape i was selfish Tried to talk to her, but she was zoned out and it felt like we were in different planets. See, that's what happens when you try to be cool and try to just salvage a good time with things you don't know. You end up with unnecessary baggage. I still laugh at that, and that's just savage. But I hope God will see her as I have on a church day. And now because of me, she'll forever be cursed, eh? Spoke to me like we broke up in the worst way. But I'm sorry we had to break up 2016 on the very first day. I'm just expressing this shit through my eyes. That's the only way I know how to sell it. If it's how I saw it, best believe that is the only way that I'm gonna tell it. I think about my life every other night. I reminisce on it like saved letters. If the characters don't like the way I tell my story, they should have behaved better. And I'm not seeking sympathy or pity from man. I wrote this from the heart so you can understand. I remember one Sunday morning you were getting wasted. Had a ton of problems in your mind, but then never really embraced it. You were at rock bottom and I never really knew how you faced it. See, I'm not a drinker, but I've tried alcohol and I didn't like how it tasted. But you don't drink for the taste, you drink for escapement. So you drank a fifth of vodka that they offered you. And that basically triggered everything that bothered you. And you lashed out at the people that loved you the most. Said hurtful words to me when we are supposed to be close. But I overlooked everything because we are supposed to be bros. I blamed it on the alcohol and not you were supposed. But alcohol is a truth syrup if you listen close. It reveals your true self and your true plans. So you spat at my face and I was like, damn, how could you do that when I consider you fam? And none of this got to me till you mentioned my grand. That's when I balled up my fist on the palm of my hand. At the time, I could have knocked you out, man. But I didn't for the sake of the old you. And what's worse is for that period, I felt like I didn't know you. So 2016, you taught me how to forgive. You taught me how to let go and just live, how to face a problem and not become a coward. Realize that my success are considered ours. It's just a shame that things between your other friend became sour. Maybe one day he'll understand that you were at your darkest hour. Cause this feud is really of no use to me. I know things won't be like they used to be. And that's okay, that's not news to me. One day you'll come around and refuse to see what happened. That's no excuse, you see. We'll always be friends and that's the truth you seek. So 2016 was shaky and I desperately needed a breather. But life has no pause button. If the bitch did, I would leave her. And the fact that Diane got married didn't help neither. My brain had too many open tabs I couldn't log out. It was my final year of college and I wanted to drop out. Because in every fucking conversation, my name would pop up. I was ready to fuck somebody up till their eyes popped out. This honey was like, my boyfriend is about to be a pops now. I'm pregnant with his kid and before I could give her props now and congratulate her, she said she wasn't planning to keep it. I told her babies are a blessing, but she wouldn't believe it. Said I wouldn't convince her otherwise, so why should just leave it? Her life is chaos and her baby's the last thing that she needed. Asked me to be with her all the way and she pleaded. Now I'm finna escort her aboard a baby that ain't mine this weekend. My palms were sweaty and my knees began to weaken. The world had colored her gray and the pictures is drawn. The supposed father had left alone, she seemed torn. J. Cole's last ones felt like the perfect song. It's funny how the ones who are for abortion have already been born. I never supported a decision, but I did respect it. Because I don't know what it's like to be a woman in that position, view the world from that perspective. She should have known better not to be sexually active or maybe even go in the sack unprotected. I put my feelings and beliefs aside so I didn't judge. Tried to be there for her, I know it's not much. But I couldn't take the pain away, all I could do was watch. She claimed her friends alienated her and such. But she's the one who shut them out of her problem. So I carried her problems, hoping to solve them. But she regretted a decision I can tell from her face. It's eating her up inside and her trust is misplaced. Asked me to marry her because I understand the situation. I gently turned her down. I was going through self-evaluation. And just because we both damaged doesn't mean we belong. I don't even see her that way, so it would be wrong. 
Then I heard her blab about me like, hey, 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 so and so. He thinks he's smart, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, and no one knows. And this shit is getting to me like slow and slow. You think I give a shit off, oh, fuck? Well, no and no. I'm not much to look at, but I guarantee my brain will wow you. Take a swim in my gene pool and the Levi's will drown you. I trust God's wisdom for my adversities and pain. I seen a 12-year-old girl fall off a moving train. Passengers clutching their chest like Jesus. I seen a father get minced by a metro rail train. His casket was closed. Family buried him in pieces. Pray this ain't the afterlife. Thus my pain never ceases. I remember getting mugged by niggas 30 years or older. Homie put that gat to my chest and his hand on my shoulder. He's slightly tipsy because his conscience wouldn't stomach this sober. One on each side of the bridge, I make a move, my life is over. He probably wanted to be a doctor, but life debating his choice. I could have screamed for help and commenced making some noise. If I had my own gun, dog, I'd be blazing these boys. Futex and Letty Phone. I sensed the hate in his voice. The adrenaline took over and I jumped off the bridge with quick speed. My shoulder broke my fall, but got dislocated because I fell on some Brixie. I made a decision and it paid off. Looking back, that was kind of risky. I would never do something like that again if it ain't compelled by whiskey. Look, that was my only option, fam. I had no other. Because earlier that day, my girl told me I was going to be a father. I should have known better to hit it without protection, so I ain't blaming her. Are we going to keep it? If so, then what are we naming her? <laughs> Damn, I said her. If we having a baby girl, I opt saving her. And for the remainder of my days, I'll be praising her. But if she looks anything like her mother, then I'm in trouble because all these boys will be chasing her. Want to teach her her worth so she won't settle for less when less is facing her. And my biggest achievement in life will be raising her. Accept you for who you are, humble or proud, reserved or competitive. But when your mother did the second and third test, they both came out negative. Was I sad that I wasn't going to be a father? Maybe I was pissed. Because nothing worse than loving a baby that doesn't exist. My girl and I grew further apart till she was no longer mine. Our hearts drifted and we weren't ambitiously aligned. Thought she was the one and the breakup was unlikely. She coulda, woulda, shoulda been wifey. Spoke to her like we broke up in the worst way. But you ain't sorry we broke up 2016, the 9th of November on my birthday. Homie from back in the day hit me up as a grown up. Said I done seen the other cat on TV and he blown up. But we always thought you'd make it first, dog. Own up. Look at all the support around you, all the love you're showing how. It seems like you have lost all faith and you're hopeless. But when it comes to that finish line, you are the closest. You just gotta keep pushing and trust in your progress. I believe in your skill. I don't know if you've noticed, but you're destined for greatness. I just want you to know this. And hearing that shit out loud left me shook. Never seen it that way, I guess I never really understood. I was too focused on why I was being overlooked. I don't rap with Yovel cats, and it's not because I don't want to. They walk up to me like, man, let's do a track, I got you. Then I never hear from them again, and that's just awful. I am no longer scared or remorseful. I gotta use what I got, I'm resourceful. Can't leave my thoughts unread or unspoken. 2017 came, and 2016's curse was broken.